Autolite presents Betty Grable in a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. I was in the two-by-four dressing room changing into my street clothes. It was raining, beating down on the low skylight like a fury. It made such a racket that I didn't hear a thing. Until the buzzer rang and the outer door opened. The first I heard your voice, I was sorry for you. You sounded tired and you had a cold. You'd be surprised if I ever told you, but I wasn't frightened at all when you spoke to Irwin. You the photographer who runs this place? I'm James Irwin, and this is my photo agency, yes. You have some work to do? I got work to do. <coughs> there's, a, there's a dame named Jeannie Dunn here, Irwin. When you said my name, I got a little scared without knowing why. I'd been modeling a sunsuit, and I was cold anyway. Irwin was never a guy to pay for decent heating. Now I got cold way inside, and my fingers trembled as I tried to zip my dress. I leaned against the partition to try and hear better, but the rain was too loud. I couldn't figure out why I was so jittery. I, I was blank. I, I couldn't remember what had happened all day or yesterday. But I knew you were dangerous to me, and I had to find out why. I opened the door a crack to hear better. Oh, Jeannie's posed for me for the past five years off and on. Say, why don't you wait until she gets dressed and ask her yourself? Any pictures of her handy? Say, who are... Easy, easy. This is police business. Oh. And that was all it took to make Irwin dangerous, too. Then he was against me. I stood there, hidden by the door, sick of you pawing through my pictures. Even sicker of Irwin fawning over you because you were a cop. <laughs> she's really stacked, isn't she, Cat? But if she's done anything wrong, don't worry. I'll tell you all I can't believe in. I'll cooperate. I believe you. You're the type. I couldn't stay out of sight any longer. I slipped into my shoes and stepped out from behind the door. Miss Jeannie Dunn. What do you want, mister? I want to find out a few facts. You live with your mother, don't you? Sure, the old lady's an invalid. Hey, what happened? Shut up. I'm talking to Miss Dunn. She's got a boyfriend, too. She might not tell you herself, Cap. Get out of the room. Get out and stay out until I call you. Hey, look, Miss... Get out! Okay, all right, sure. Okay. Thanks for that, anyhow. But look about Ted Warp. If it's anything you're trying to pin on Ted, then Irwin's right. I won't talk. Oh. <coughs> I... I didn't mention that name, did I? Ted wouldn't do a thing. Nothing wrong. What time do you usually leave home for work, miss? About eight, if it's any of your affair. Yes, I'm afraid it is. Could you be more specific? Describe your routine, say, this morning, for example. This morning? I, I, I've had such a headache all day, I really don't know about this morning. Actually, <laughs> I can't remember. Most mornings, I get up about 6.30 and fix breakfast. Well, does your mother eat with you? My friend, Mr. Irwin, told you. My mother's not well. She stays in bed until noon. And you leave her breakfast ready for her? That's right. Being sick, your mother hasn't much appetite, has she, miss? No. I leave her teacup on the kitchen table with the tea measured out in a strainer ready to pour hot water through. Now, mister, you'd better tell me what... How long have you been going with this fellow? What's his name, Ted? A year or so, but... How old are you? I beg your pardon, miss. Thirty. About thirty. <coughs> Plan to marry him? Why, yes, as soon as... Well, as soon as possible. Uh, what with supporting your mother? <coughs> Excuse me. Prices nowadays, a dollar don't go far. Uh, you'd better take care of that cold, mister. Oh, thank you. Are your mother and Ted Wark friendly? You'd better take care of that cold. I repeated that stupidly so as not to hear your questions. Then I stared at something you fished out of your coat pocket. I felt the arteries jumping on the sides of my neck. You were looking at my neck. Maybe I could ask you sometime if that was a tip-off you learned by studying people like me. You toyed with the thing in your hand, and it picked up a sliver of light from a flood lamp. It sparkled like a, a jewel. Only it wasn't any more a jewel than any of the junk on my bureau. It was a common tea strainer made out of bright new copper. 
You watched me and spun the thing by the handle between your finger and thumb. I couldn't stop looking at the shiny wire, a mesh like a net. Well, miss, what do you say? Are your mother and Ted Wark friendly? Suddenly my mind cleared. Everything I'd managed to block out came back. Everything. There was no more escaping the past. Or you. Stop playing with that tea strainer. Huh? Put that thing away. Get it out of my sight. Can you faint dead away and keep sitting in the chair talking and acting normal? I did, Mr. Detective. At the sight of the tea strainer you kept spinning between your fingers. A cold blackness paralyzed me and our two voices seemed to be coming from a great distance. My stomach felt sick. You hit at me with questions and I fought with all my will to keep from giving dangerous answers. The rain banged louder on the skylight. A flood lamp sputtered out. And my breathing quieted down. You said your mother and Ted Wark are friendly? Yes, yes, I told you. Where did you get that tea strainer? Five and dime store. Why, miss? Nothing. Uh, <coughs> you, uh, you leave your mother's breakfast ready for her? Hadn't you asked me that before, too? I, I wasn't sure. But the words started in memories flashing through my mind like jumping movie scenes. You studied me with your tired, expressionless eyes. But you couldn't see into my memory. The nagging clatter of my alarm clock at home was waking me one morning. Any morning except today. The others were all alike for the last ten years. All right, you devil. Get up. Lord, another day. There, are you awake? Yes, Mother. Sleep well? Oh, I'm always in pain. You know that, dear. If you're up, you could rub my back a while before you have breakfast, dear. Yes, Mother. Oh. Oh, my, you're so fortunate to be able to eat a hearty meal and have a career that takes you out into the world. While I lie here in pain. Oh, I'm not complaining. It's just... Yes, Mother. Hadn't you better take your medicine before I rub your back? Oh, my medicine. Oh, yes, indeed. And, Jean, don't forget to have the prescription refilled. It's getting low, and I can't bear the I'm sure there's without... plenty, Mother. I'll get it for you now. And I wish you would. I don't know how I have to... I went into the bathroom while Mother kept droning on and on. The bottle was almost empty. Mother, you haven't been taking more than you should of this, have you? Don't be absurd. You heard the doctor say that my medicine, more than one capsule a day, is poison. She talked and talked, accusing me of being careless with her medicine and neglecting her. She said if it hadn't been for me, she would still be on the stage and famous. But I realized she was in pain and unhappy, and some mornings I was afraid all of my strength would be drained before I could get away from her, especially when she harped on Ted and me getting married. Uh, Dear, don't be angry, but I simply must ask whether you're serious with your young man this time. This time? Well, after all, Jean, in the past years, there were several young men I certainly thought you were going to become engaged to. And every single one lost interest. Oh, Mother. Oh, yes, they did. You can't deny it. At your age, dear, a girl has to consider her future. Uh, now, that young man, um, uh, William something, he surely wanted to marry you. And he had a bit of money, too. Now, why did he stop coming to see you, dear? Was it anything you might have told him? <laughs> You're trying to use me to excuse your own shortcomings, dear. What on earth? How could I scare away any of your young men? When I was on the stage, young men used to flock around me like bees. And now your Ted certainly thinks well enough of me to bring me flowers and look at my scrapbooks. Even if my own daughter... I wonder how long that will go on. When will you ask him whether he thinks a daughter has the right to let a helpless old invalid die alone... (laughs) Horrible, horrible girl. Or have you asked him that already? After the sacrifices I've made for you, ruining my own health, destroying my youth and my career, so that you would have the best from life. Oh, Mother. Perhaps the easiest way for both of us would be for me to not try and hang on to this mortal coil any longer. 
Close my eyes and never wake up. 